So all I want to talk about today is the resource challenge um, that we face right now uh, in, in amongst all the other challenges um, and what sustainable resource management means and then how you ground that in the community and build uh, enterprise models of it. Um, and then specific opportunities you've got going on here in the East Midlands around commercial and industrial waste as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a medium for uh, social enterprise development and public service delivery. And then just, just by you know, that strap line now for new, newly launched social enterprise mark, training for people and planet. So just to remind you, going back to um, Nigel's green parrot, you know, and the environment, and the environment. This is uh, quite important that people are always factoring what you're doing to be green as well as what you're doing to be social. So um, this, uh, oh, it's much better on the screen actually, sorry, you can't see that, but a, 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 a violently coloured um, furniture sculpture, I call it the furniture skewer. So we just took a load of re old reused furniture, shoved it up, stands about, um, I think, 20, 24 feet uh, high, painted up, and it's, it's what we do at festivals. It's on the bases uh, of office desks, um, and then you just staple it up, and it, it becomes a kind of meeting point at um, festivals and whatnot, which I draw attention to it. I mean, <clears throat> this is a big one wall, like it stands uh, two and a half meters tall, and, um, you know, we do a big one wall thing. Uh, anyway, um, so the resource challenge, which of these, uh, try, you, know, you know about the three R's, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle, all that, you can say. Which, which is the better sort of diagram here? On the top one we've got um, prevention, going down to minimization, waste prevention, waste minimization, reuse, recycling, energy recovery, disposal. Same hierarchy down there, which, which one's better? Just, uh, aesthetically or any criteria you choose? Anybody oh. like? Which one? Oh. Yeah, why do you say that? Uh, well, because you're disposing of the least amount. Exactly. You've got the least amount that's being disposed of, you've got the most amount being reduced. Now, <clears throat> I've not heard anyone in all the energy stuff, mind you, I skipped out of the energy session, not heard anyone talk today about megawatts. Uh, 21 year olds as a, as a concept uh, this year. The megawatt is the megawatt that you don't have to generate because you've conserved it. Yeah, so it's the cheapest energy on the planet. So that's why the whole retrofit thing that we started off with, that's actually where there's the most energy money to be made. And then microgeneration, you can do all that saving energy first before you invest in microgen. It's the same with stuff, really. So I talk about mega stuff now. So this is the, uh, you know, it's making the connection between uh, wood reused and trees still standing. And the, the mega stuff is the stuff that you don't need to extract or dig up or whatever because of what you're saving. So it's an, it's an early concept, it's 21 years younger than the uh, concept of mega energy. But in, in California now there's a mega power station and in Australia when they set up their feeding tariffs and emissions trading, they use the, um, the mega concept to get it into the market. Okay, so at LCI we talk about sustainable resource management. Sustainability is trying to everyone knows, environmental, social, economic, the triple bottom line. Um, for us, these are our kind of five re-words, reduce, repair, reuse, remanufacture, recycle. There's money to be made at every part of that value chain in a, in a community. Um, here's a sort of whole set of different activities that are currently going on in our network. Pick out a few. Um, knowledge services. So um, I'll be using some slides from a, from a firm called Resource Futures later on. That's a social enterprise. Um, they specialize in resource analysis. Um, uh, uh, the guy from the development agency has gone now, but they, he, they hired them to do a whole piece of work on green social enterprises in this area. I'll be using some of their evidence, but there's an awful lot of knowledge uh, about resource which can be sold on just as knowledge without actually moving any stuff around. We just opened up the Building Materials Reuse Centre in, in South London. <coughs> We've got wood reuse recycling going on. Still collecting pure paper to recycle as paper. So we've got businesses going on in each of these areas. IT reuse, just a little bin about the size of this chair of old circuit boards, currently selling for about a thousand pounds. So, you know, it's about, it's about collection. And the great thing about community level enterprises, you've got the reach to, to go and collect it without, you know, costing you a lot because you've got all those relationships anyway in the community. So, you can split it, you now you like it, you remember where you can recycle the battery, don't you? Everybody's got somewhere where you can drop off a battery. It's a bit like that. You know, what about just collecting those old bits of we. Um, and the key thing about licensing regulation, which is loads in, in waste, is that if something is donated for reuse, it isn't waste. Waste is in the eye of the beholder. So you don't need licensing if somebody's given it to you to make better use of it. So that's kind of a big get out, uh, if you like. And then if you do manage to sell it on, you get gift aid. 
don't know the way in uh, as a charity because you, you give me your sofa, I set it on as a social enterprise or as a charity, I sold it for 20 quid, I, I can claim gift today back if you sign the form on the front end. So there's, there's different ways of, of adding value to your basic task. And just at the bottom here, the latest buzz is all around energy, as we've seen today. Really. And in, in the resource world, you're talking about anaerobic digestion and you're talking about combined heat and power, CHP and AD. And I'm like, yeah, come on, everybody. Uh, the latest ball in the under fives football playground, you know, under fives playing football is just the ball. Lots of kids, there's no goals, there's no rules, there's no referee, just run around after the ball. And so the latest uh, ball in the under five playground in waste is anaerobic digestion and CHP, preferably combined. But um, you can do that in the community. So community CHP, community AD, we're currently piloting a um, residential scale AD plan, uh, which will do just for household waste, then you get a little bit of heat and power. Okay, so what is the community resource sector? You've got about uh, 10,000 employees in, in uh, Britain, um, 12,000 volunteers, big training footprint as well, training of further 10. Now it's reaching about a million people in terms of either service collecting from your household or delivering furniture. It's quite a reach, 150 million turnover, saving about half a million, half a million tons. What I'd say about uh, that is in um, big commercial waste companies, they look at how many tons you move um, and how many people you take to move it, and they want obviously less people and most stuff. And obviously we're in the business of trying to keep as many people as gainfully employed with as little stuff as possible, because that's what you do in a world of resource depletion. You know, so you want to keep, uh, as is going on on this site really, how, how many people can you keep gainfully employed on a woodland? Uh, you know, that's, that's the challenge. And so um, we pride ourselves on being able to employ more people with less stuff. Um, pioneers really in the sector, you know, we set up uh, community compost. In fact, curbside recycling came out of the community sector. Uh, there's been a whole trajectory and history of how this stuff works, where it starts in the community sector, gradually a, a council uh, often begrudgingly takes it on, and then before you know it, it's been privatised like every other public service, and it's back out in commercial hands. And we're, we're, we're still we're fighting a bit of a rearguard really action to reclaim some areas. In reuse alone, um, you can get 12 tonnes of carbon per tonne. Textiles, if you recycle, if you reuse a tonne of textiles, that carbon saving, that the embedded carbon in the in the um, textiles, about 14 tons saved EFRA. So in terms of sort of uh, you know giving yourself a positive carbon upside and saying yeah we are part of the low carbon economy, um, even just reusing um, a ton of wooden furniture will save you about four tons, 3.8 tons of carbon per ton. So <coughs> these are the ratios that we're playing with. We're looking at uh, as a, as a network, uh, we're looking at introducing a community carbon credit later on this year, which will give away um, trying to make that into real money for projects tapping into the carbon market, so it's not all about um, arguably clean development mechanisms overseas. Um, where's, where's the sector growing at the moment? You've got housing associations, a big push. Um, sustainable resource management is the fastest growing part of the social firms movement, the social firms network. Um, it's great uh, uh, project work for people with various abilities. 